For the past few days, we've been hearing from St. Paul, writing about the good news, the God spell, the gospel. For him, the core of that good news is the resurrection. Christ died for our sins, was buried, and was raised on the third day. Then he appeared to Peter, to the Twelve, to 500 brothers and sisters, to James, and to all the apostles. And finally, Paul writes, he appeared to me, the famous event on the road to Damascus. And that was Thursday's reading. Yesterday, we heard Paul go on about the resurrection, about our resurrection. Christ is the first fruits of the great harvest. We too will rise from the dead. And so we come to today's reading, Paul's attempt to describe what resurrection from the dead looks like. Uh, like, a, like a good teacher, Paul gives us a, a for instance, and it's like this. A good example is the mark of a good teacher. And Paul's description of sowing and harvesting gives us a for instance about the resurrection. What we sow is one thing, a bare seed perhaps, of wheat or of some other grain. But what comes out of the ground is something else. So, take death. We die. Our body is buried. We decompose. Or perhaps we die. Our body is cremated. We become become ashes. End of the story, you might say. No way, says Paul. Yes, our bodies become part of the earth or ashes. This is a necessary part of the process. What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. You sow seeds. They disappear as seeds, but up come flowers or grass or wheat or corn. And we only know life this side of death. What is life like beyond death, on the other side, beyond the grave or the ashes? Jesus talked about it as uh, ascending to his Father and our Father, to his God and our God. And each Sunday when we recite the Creed, we say, I believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. That's that's an amazing statement of faith. Do we ever stop to think what we're saying? I believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Does it just come trippingly off our tongue instead of from the depth of our heart? So if we're just flesh and blood, we're perishable. We'll have a best before date, and that will be that. But if we're in the image of the risen Christ, we'll rise from the dead to live forever. The perishable has a best before date. The imperishable is good forever. See, they thought they got rid of Jesus on Good Friday. They never dreamt there would be an Easter Sunday. Let us renew our belief in the resurrection of the dead and life everlasting, not just for Jesus, 
for us too. For farmers in many parts of the world facing drought and little or no crop yield, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for the hungry, the uprooted, and the homeless, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for a deeper understanding of the stories Jesus tells us, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those who have requested our prayers and for their intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and for our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our you satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed God. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let us pray that our offering of Eucharist today may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. <laughs> Father, the birth of Christ your Son deepened the Virgin Mother's love for you and increased her holiness. May the humanity of Christ give us courage in our weakness. May it free us from our sins and make our offering acceptable through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Our Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks as we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, she became the Virgin Mother of your only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is forever the light of the world. Through him the choirs of angels and all the powers of heaven praise and worship your glory. May our voices blend with theirs as we join in their unending hymn. 